Okay, another quick little video I want to do just to kind of mention something. Uh, my wife and I were talking about this, and uh, you know, we have a lot of discussions and things um, about the Bible and everything. And and you know, this I said in my study on rapture scriptures in the book of Romans that the two heresies, the two biggest heresies right now that are leading Christianity into major apostasy, um, or I should say, what falls under the Christian title, Christian. You know, what's leading into major apostasy is number one, post trib rapturism, and number two, easy believism. This belief that all you have to do is just say a prayer or just even believe that you're saved and you're saved. And there doesn't have to be any kind of changed life or nothing really happens. You just, I believe, therefore I'm saved. Anybody that believes, well, they're just, you know, they're, they could be wicked or whatever, but they're just a carnal Christian. Uh, it's nonsense. But, you know, we, we got to talking about this, and I said, you know, it's kind of interesting because the two at first don't look like they would fit together. But then you start to think about the deception of the post-trib rapture and easy believism. And when you combine the two, you realize how dangerous this system is. Because easy believism is just simply saying, it's easy to get saved. There's no changed life. There's no, there's no all this difficult stuff. Just come. It's a free gift. Just take it. You know, and, and you're saved. And that's it. Now think about that. For people that are actually post-trib and they're not really truly saved, they are easy believism. Their salvation is just something that they did when they were two years old in Sunday school. And they say, I'm saved because I once prayed a prayer. Or I believe that I'm saved. You know, well you can believe that you're a Corvette or something. That doesn't make you a Corvette. You know. But these people that are teaching easy believism... They'll go into the time of Jacob's trouble, and they're just going to keep saying, "Well, I'm a Christian. I, I believe, but you know, I mean, I'm eternally secure, and I'm going to. I have to take the mark because you know it's required. I'm supposed to submit to the government and whatever else." See, easy believism is setting the stage for people that get left behind, because salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be tough. You have to endure to the end to be saved. You don't have to endure to the end of anything right now to be saved. You put your faith in Jesus Christ, His shed blood on the cross. Come to God as a sinner. All right? In that time period that's coming, it's going to be a different story. The elements of faith are still there, sure. But now you can't take the mark. Now there's a condition to salvation. But see, easy believism says there's no conditions. There's no anything. No changed life. You see how the two are working together? Easy believism and post-trib rapturism are damnable heresies. They will damn people to hell. Very, very sad. And again, people say, well, this isn't a salvation issue. Yes, it is a salvation issue. As I showed in the uh, uh, study in Romans there, the pre-trib rapture scriptures in Romans, John chapter 11, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Well, what is the resurrection for Christians? The dead in Christ rise first, then we which are alive and remain, we go up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Jesus is the rapture. He is the resurrection. And when we get up there in the clouds, we meet the Lord in the air. And you say, well, yeah, we'll see Jesus for the first time. Yes, we will. But think about what else is implied there. The body of Christ is complete. Interesting. We will meet the Lord, the body of Christ. We're all going to be there. Those that are truly saved, dead and living. Up we go. It's going to be a good time.